Don Juan urged me to get a hold of myself, because the darkness was like the wind, an unknown entity at large that could trick me if I was not careful, and I had to be perfectly calm in order to deal with it. You must let yourself go, so your personal power will merge with the power of the night. This is insane, I protested. Don Juan did not get angry or impatient. He laughed quietly and said that a warrior acted as if he knew what he was doing, when in effect, he knew nothing. He repeated one statement three or four times, as if he wanted me to memorize it. A warrior is impeccable when he trusts his personal power, regardless of whether it is small or enormous. After a short wait, he asked me if I was alright. I nodded, and he went swiftly out of sight with hardly a sound. I walked for perhaps ten minutes. Suddenly, some dark mass jumped out in front of me. I screamed and fell backward on my seat. My ears began buzzing. The fright was so great that it cut my wind. I had to open my mouth to breathe. Stand up. I didn't mean to scare you. I just came to meet you. He said he'd been watching my crappy way of walking, and when I moved in the darkness, I looked like a crippled old lady trying to tiptoe between mud puddles. He found this image funny and laughed out loud. He then proceeded to demonstrate a special way of walking in the darkness, a way which he called the Gate of Power. He stooped over in front of me and made me run my hands over his back and knees in order to get an idea of the position of his body. Don Juan's trunk was slightly bent forward, but his spine was straight. His knees were also slightly bent. He walked slowly in front of me so I could take notice that he raised his knees almost to his chest every time he took a step and then he actually ran out of sight and came back again. I could not conceive how he could run in total darkness. The gate of power is for running at night. I pointed out that the only way I could understand his acts was by assuming he knew those hills to perfection and thus could avoid the pitfalls. Don Juan whispered forcefully, This is the night, and it is power. He then said in a softer voice that at night the world was different and that his ability to run in the darkness had nothing to do with his knowledge of those hills. He said that the key to it was to let one's personal power flow out freely so it could merge with the power of the night, and that once that power took over, there was no chance for a slip-up. He added that if I doubted it, I should consider for a moment what was taking place. For a man of his age to run in those hills at that hour would be suicidal if the power of the night was not guiding him. Look, he said, and ran swiftly out into the darkness and came back again. The way his body moved was so extraordinary, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He sort of jogged on the same spot for a moment. He then told me to follow him. I did it with utter constraint and uneasiness. With extreme care, I tried to look where I was stepping, but it was impossible to judge distance. Don Juan came back and jogged by my side. He whispered I had to abandon myself to the power of the night and trust the little bit of personal power I had, or I would never be able to move with freedom, and that the darkness was encumbering only because I relied on my sight for everything I did, not knowing that another way to move was to let power be my guide. I tried various times without success. I simply could not let go. The fear of injuring my legs was overpowering. Don Juan ordered me to keep on moving in the same spot and try to feel as if I were actually using the gate of power. He then said he was going to run ahead and I should wait for his owl's cry. He disappeared in the darkness before I could say anything. I closed my eyes at times and jogged on the same spot with my knees and trunk bent for perhaps half an hour. Little by little my tension began to ease up until I was fairly comfortable. Then I heard Don Juan's cry. I ran five or six yards in the direction where the cry came from, trying to abandon myself as Don Juan had suggested, but stumbling into a bush immediately brought me back to a feeling of insecurity. Don Juan was waiting for me and corrected my posture. He insisted I should curl my fingers against my palms, stretching out the thumb and index finger of each hand. He said in his opinion, I was just indulging myself in my feelings of inadequacy, since I knew for a fact I could always see fairly well, no matter how dark the night was. The gate of power was similar to finding a place of rest. Both entailed a sense of abandon, a sense of trust. The gate of power required that one keep the eyes on the ground directly in front, 
because even a glance to either side would produce an alteration in the flow of movement. He explained that bending the trunk forward was necessary in order to lower the eyes, and the reason for lifting the knees up to the chest was because the steps had to be short and safe. He warned me that I was going to stumble a great deal at first, but he assured me that with practice, I could run as swiftly and as safely as I could in the daytime. For hours, I tried to imitate his movements and get into the mood he recommended. He would very patiently jog in the same spot in front of me, or he would take off in a short run and return to where I was so I could see how he moved. He would even push me and make me run a few yards. Then he took off and called me with a series of owl cries. In some unknown way, I moved with an unexpected degree of self-confidence. To my knowledge, I had done nothing to warrant that feeling, but my body seemed to be cognizant of things without me thinking about them. For example, I could not really see the jagged rocks in my way, but my body always managed to step on the edges and never in the crevices, except for a few mishaps when I lost my balance because I became distracted. The degree of concentration needed to keep scanning the area directly in front of me had to be total. As Don Juan had warned me, any slight glance to the side or too far ahead altered the flow. I located Don Juan after a long search. He was sitting by some dark shapes that seemed to be trees. He came toward me and said that I was doing very well, but it was time to quit because he had been using his whistle long enough and he was sure by then it could be imitated by others. I felt relieved and asked him who would imitate his cry. Powers, allies, spirits, who knows, he said in a whisper. He explained that those entities of the night usually made very melodious sounds but had a great disadvantage in reproducing the raspiness of human cries or bird whistlings. He cautioned me to always stop moving if I ever heard such a sound and to keep in mind all he had said because at some other time I might need to make the proper identification. In a reassuring tone, he said that I had a very good idea what the gate of power was like and that in order to master it, I needed only a slight push, which I could get on another occasion when we ventured out again into the night. He patted me on the shoulder and announced he was ready to leave. Let's get out of here, he said and began running. Wait, let's walk, I screamed frantically. Don Juan stopped and took off his hat. Golly, we're in a fix. You know I cannot walk in the dark. I can only run. I'll break my legs if I walk. I had the feeling he was grinning when he said that, although I could not see his face. He added in a confidential tone he was too old to walk, and the little bit of gate of power I learned had to be stretched to meet the occasion.